the question is where and how did the Russians get into this? And I think it's a very important question. So I, I assume that a lot of the people here may have, and if you haven't, I hope you will, read the declassified uh, report by the intelligence community that came out in early January. This is 17 agencies. 17 agencies, all in agreement, which I know from my experience as a senator and secretary of state is, is hard to get. They concluded with high confidence that the Russians ran an extensive information war campaign against my campaign to influence voters in the election. They did it through paid advertising, we think. They did it through uh, false news sites. They did it through these thousand agents. They did it through machine learning, which you know kept spewing out this stuff over and over again the algorithms that they developed now. So that was the conclusion. And I think it's fair to ask, how did that actually influence the campaign? And how did they know what messages to deliver? Who told them? Who told them? Yeah. Who were they coordinating with or colluding with? Because the Russians historically, in the last couple of decades and then increasingly, you know, are launching cyber attacks and they are stealing vast amounts of information and a lot of the information they've stolen, they've used for internal purposes to affect markets, to affect um, the intelligence services, et cetera. So this was different because they went public and they were conveying this uh, weaponized information and the content of it. And they were running, you know, there's all these stories about, you know, guys over in Macedonia who are running these fake news sites. And, I, you know, I've seen them now. And you, you sit there and it looks like a, you know, sort of low level CNN operation. And or a got, fake newspaper, or like a fake the Denver news, Guardian. Like a fake newspaper. Yeah. And so the Russians, in my opinion, and based on the intel and counter intel people I've talked to, could not have known how best to weaponize that information unless they had been guided. And here's a here's guided a, by Americans. Guided by Americans and guided by people who had, you know, polling and data so who information. Is that, huh? Now let me just finish because this is the second and third step. So we know that they they did that. We understand it. Um, best example. So within one hour, one hour of the excess Hollywood tapes being leaked. Within one hour, the Russians, let's uh, say WikiLeaks, same thing, dumped <laughs> the John Podesta emails. Now, if you've ever read the John Podesta emails, they are anodyne to boredom. <laughs> but they- Yeah, we had him here once. Yeah, but they were- <laughs> They were, yeah, he, and I, you know, forgive him for Break what he up. said about you, yeah. Um, so they were run-of-the-mill emails, especially run-of-the-mill for a campaign. Should we do this? What should she say? I don't, you know, the, the stuff that is so common, basic. Within one hour, they dumped them, and then they began to weaponize them. And they began to have some of their allies within the uh, Internet world like Infowars, take out pieces and begin to say the most outrageous, outlandish, absurd lies you can imagine. And so they had to be ready for that and they had to have a plan for that and they had to be given the go ahead. Okay, this could be the end of the Trump campaign. Dump it now and then let's do everything we can to weaponize it. And we know it hurt us because as I explain in my book, you know, the, uh, the Comey letter, which was, now we know, partly based on a false memo from the Russians. Right. It was a classic piece of Russian disinformation, compromat, they call it. So for whatever reason, and I speculate, but I, I can't look inside the guy's mind, you know, he dumps that on me on October 28th, and I immediately start falling. But what was really interesting, since the mainstream media covered that, as I say, like Pearl Harbor, front pages everywhere, huge type, et cetera. And all of the Trump people go around screaming, lock her up, lock her up, and, and all of that. At the same time, the biggest Google searches were not for Comey, because that information was just lying out there. It was for WikiLeaks. 
And so voters who are being targeted with all of this false information are genuinely trying to make up their minds. What does it mean? Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.